Hi everybody, Jeremy Siskin here. I'm the author of the books, The Brothers Karamazov, The Sound and the Fury, and Infinite Jest. Okay, that's a joke for people who have watched this channel for a while. If you haven't watched this channel, then boy, we do fun jokes like this all the time. I'm really actually the author of these great books, Playing Solo Jazz Piano and Jazz Piano Fundamentals, books one and two. Okay, um, and today I want to talk <laughs> with you about, you know, what I refer to only half-jokingly as like the easiest modal voicing. Um, and this is something that you, that we use especially in blues and blues related playing. So uh, it's kind of this nexus of modal and blues in a certain way. So let's dive in. Here's the overall idea of this voicing. It's quite a simple idea actually, is that we're going to take second inversion triads within a mode. So let's just parse that out. Second inversion triad means um, if we're playing G major, that's root position. We move the root to the top, we move the lowest note to the top, that's first inversion. We move the lowest note to the top again, that's second inversion. And what second inversion triads all have in common is that they have a fourth between the two lowest notes and then a third between the two highest notes. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we're going to put them all, we're gonna create all the possible second inversion triads within a mode. So let's just, for example, take the G mixolydian mode. I, I'm choosing it because it's all white keys. And it's nice to choose mixolydian because we're gonna use dominant chords on a blues, um, and those chords usually use the mixolydian mode. Okay, so if we're forming a second inversion triad starting on G within that mode, it's gonna be a fourth plus a third. And we're gonna keep moving this hand shape up the piano. All right, there's a second inversion triad starting on A, on B, C, D, E. And notice, and this is really the key to modal voicings, is that the nature of these intervals do change from chord to chord. They're not all exactly transposed, right? For example, in this chord, the interval on top is a major third, right? G to B, a B natural is in the G major scale, so we call that a major third. Whereas here, in the next chord up, between A and C, this is a minor third. C is not part of the A major scale. So A to C is a minor third. And then, most strikingly, in this version, we don't even have a perfect fourth. We have an augmented fourth, or tritone between the bottom two notes. And this is just totally normal in the character of modal voicings, is that we're gonna have the same general interval category, but the specifics might be a little bit different. They're not gonna be exactly transposed. Now, you might have already made a blues association, and G mixolydian is such a perfect place to start because we use these voicings often for playing the tune all blues. second inversion triads. Now you might say that doesn't sound particularly bluesy, it sounds more modal. And we can fix this somewhat easily um, by adding in some grace notes. And particularly, we're gonna add in grace notes right below the third of the chord. Well, I should say the third of the mode. So in this case, in G, it's gonna be a B flat below B. And the fifth a D flat or a C sharp below D. Why those notes? Those are part of the G blues scale, right? We have a B flat and a D flat in that scale. So now listen. Now, if I'm going to go and comp on um, all blues, I might add those. Now 
we've really got a blues character. Um, really nice bluesy character. And these voicings are really common in any kind of a gospel-y blues kind of a sound. Um, if I'm playing Amazing Grace, I'll stay in the same key. how that really adds a, a blues or gospel element to it. Now, you're probably noticing I'm playing some notes outside of um, the key. Um, that's because I'm a goddamn genius. I'm sorry. Uh, I shouldn't be swearing on my channel. I also shouldn't be lying. <laughs> I do, um, here's one version, kind of a pattern to memorize. These are our two blue notes, and this goes so beautifully. But we can sometimes replace our normal notes with blue notes. Right, instead of D and B, which are the normal notes, we can replace with D flat and B flat. Remember, those are the two blue notes, or the two notes from the G blues scale. Um, you know, that also works for this voicing. Instead of playing B and D, detail now a few ways that we might use these patterns, uh, or sorry, these voicings. So one is as left hand comping. So we already saw that a little bit, you know, that if we're playing all blues, As we change, for instance, from G7 to C7, we have to change mode from G Mixolydian to C Mixolydian. So it's really just going to be a matter of adding B flats. You know, I always think of like lean on me. We can use these voicings a little bit in the left hand. But to me, where they really shine is harmonizing a melody in the right hand. And this could be, you know, a predetermined melody, or it could be improvising. Switching to C. And let me tell you something that I think is really interesting. Just nerding out here, thinking about this. So, 
as we switch to C, like I said, we have to switch, and we're gonna have all second inversion chords based on C mixolydian, which is the same as F major, right? But we're still in the overall context of G blues, so what's really cool is as we're selecting blue notes, we still mostly want to take them from G blues, not C blues, right? We don't change blues scales, usually. <laughs> so here we're still, you know, now we have a B flat as part of the, our normal scale, but we still want to use this D flat to D as like a blues inflection. So not all C7s are created equally. We have to play C mixolydian differently whether we're in an overall context of G blues versus whether we're on an overall context of C blues. I hope that's interesting. Um, so, pattern I showed you. All right, see that D flat going to D? And what did I just do there? I did a sidestep, right? Sidestep meaning that I'm taking these notes and I'm displacing them by a half step and then resolving them. This can get even more fun. I don't know, that was pretty fun. Maybe equally as fun. <laughs> don't want to overpromise. Is we can separate out the low note from the other two notes. And we can form some kind of interesting bluesy figuration. So what am I doing there? I'm playing the blue notes, the regular notes, and then the lower note. I did a little side step just to the top two notes, A and C sharp, or A and D flat as my app says. Again, just bending those pitches almost into the regular notes. So I think there's all kinds of opportunity to play around with uh, this modal uh, voicing of second inversion triads, which tends to give you a blues or gospel feel. And when you combine all the normal notes of the mode with the potential blue notes, you really get some interesting possibilities. So thanks so much for checking it out. I think that's it for uh, this edition. Just a reminder, if you want to support, order from jeremysiskin.com. The holidays are coming. Now is the perfect time to grab any of your very favorite books from your very favorite YouTube jazz person. I don't know. Um, I will see you all soon. Thanks for everything.